Welcome to another Food Venture. This will be our last official Food Venture that we're doing live through Facebook Live. Um, we're doing this basically because we're going to have scheduling where we're going to be doing um, programming throughout the summer. We want to make sure that we don't have conflicts with programming. So we won't be live, but we'll be doing videos and we'll be posting those still. So Ms. Michelle's just coming in, so I'm going to move back, let her say hi. And then we can pan over to the pigs again because the pigs are what we're here for. And we've given them this enrichment, which basically simulates a little oasis. That's what I was trying to do. I gave them a little pond, gave them some palm fronds, tried to get them into kind of that tropical feel because it's so hot and hot out today. Um, and they're doing a little bit of, of redecorating. That's what they love to do. And so they're pulling on those palm fronds. They're putting them in their house for bedding. So very, very, very interesting way that they kind of interact with them. They'll sniff them all first, make sure it's not any food, and then they'll go and they'll drop them inside their house. So really, really smart, intelligent animal. Osterball hogs have been in the state of Georgia for approximately 200, 250 years um, as an official kind of heritage breed, the way we think of it. They originated from hogs that were bred over in the 1600s by Spanish sailors when they were actually coming here to the New World and they were habitating kind of the coastal areas. They would drop off these pigs as a basically a food source for later on. So they were basically creating a pantry on these islands. While that caused a, a good food source for them, it caused a problem for some of the islands and we'll talk about that a little bit. If you guys have questions, make sure you post. We're really excited. Um, to have you guys live and we're having some action in the background that we maybe don't want to they don't want to show but you can definitely guess what that sound was if you'd like to hi lucy hi bella <laughs> i can smell it too uh, <laughs> yes i'm sorry i came in late so i'm not sure exactly what you would talk so, about did you yeah. introduce them so we have not given them their names yet we've not talked about their names yet but um they do have spanish names they're very spanish influenced yeah. names they're named after telenovela actors <laughs> that's what our, our former keeper susan was real adamant about so um inside of the hog house is uh fernando fernando yeah and then ramon is yeah. on the uh on the dirt out here on the dirt and if you know your espanol that's ramon the jamon ramon the jamon and, and fernando and they're very 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 interested in these palm fronds like i said a natural thing that they would encounter in their natural habitat barrier islands and they'll actually tear them apart and they'll use them for bedding this is not being used <laughs> to eat they're actually taking them in and they're using it as a a place for them to lay down and rest a natural area that they can keep nice and cool during the hot summer days that we're experiencing because believe it or not a pink pig like you see on a farm that pig's gonna get a sunburn yeah. so these have darker pigmented part of their uh, breed they have uh, dirt covering their their body and long fur and that's to protect from the sun because a pink piggy will turn into a very very burnt piggy very quickly unless it has lots of shade. Yeah, so these, these pigs were born in uh, September of 2017. Yeah, so they're not quite um, three years old yet, right? So they're just at two and about two and months, right? Yeah, they're three, three in September. Three in September. And they're very, very big um, for where they started out. They grew very fast. And they're like. big for Osterball pigs too. Yeah, so yeah. Um, on the island, or yeah, and they like in the wild, maybe, maybe they will reach 200 pounds, but that's very rare. You say they're under 200 pounds. <laughs> if you're happy and you know it, wag your tail. Yeah, they got a little tail and they wag it. <laughs> Great. Yeah, and so they're they're redecorating their pig house, putting that bedding in, and that's a natural thing that they'll do as well. They'll find a place where they will go and bed down and sleep in during the day, the hottest parts of the day, especially in the summer. And then in the crepuscular times, we've talked about that in our food ventures, at dawn and dusk, they're gonna be most active when it comes to feeding. And so they're gonna be going out and foraging for food. What do they eat, Michelle? Um, they're omnivores. Um, nom, nom, so nom. Um, they will root around and they will eat anything from like tubers, uh, vegetation, to um, small animals yep. even. Yep. Um, They've been seen eating entrails of deer yeah. before. Gross. So I know, right? So yeah. they're opportunists and they'll eat whatever they have off. Aw, Fernando's 
taking a nap. Yeah, he's like, I just made my bed. He made his bed. Time for time for me to take a nap. Mystery, did you talk about the destruction that they do? No, I said that we would we would talk about it because I talked about them being an introduced species, being introduced to these islands and kind of what they've what they've done. And so I think a good place to start is on the beach and then moving into kind of the the coastal um, do, uh, maritime forests and yeah. how they affect that. So for me at least, for what I think about is their destruction to a learned behavior. So they've learned, and this has been passed from generation of pig to generation of pig, that on these coastal barrier islands, it is very, very, very easy to find an amazing food source that literally is deposited in a hole for you and all you have to do is dig it up. So what, so what about the sea turtle eggs? Yeah. yeah, they're pretty destructive. I mean, who doesn't like eating eggs, right? We gotta give them food. So I just wanted to show you guys that we're giving them um, marshmallow treats. Yeah. Um, these they are, have a sweet tooth. These are definitely a treat too. They don't get these often. They're just something that we give them as enrichment, something that they really will go after, root around for. And you can see that behavior, that rooting behavior. So they're gonna use their nose and they can use their nose to find those sea turtle nests and they'll actually dig up and eat those sea turtle eggs and even the young. It's really important to remember that they do have an, uh, an invasive effect on these island ecosystem and they do um, have a bad reputation as being a really horrible invasive species because of their rutting behavior and because of their predation. Yeah. Normally in the wild where we find wild pigs, a pig eating a nest full of uh, turtle eggs is very, very rare. That's not something they do. But on the barrier islands, there's not a lot of food. And they have to become very, very adapted to living in these very harsh environments. And so they will eat anything they can come across. And they've learned and they've taught their young to find lots and lots and lots of eggs from yeah. the sea turtles. Yeah, so they're a big problem on the coast, on the, on the barrier islands. Yeah. Um, and there are some organized hunts on Osaba because um, they do actually make a really good um, barbecue. Mm -hmm. So an Osaba hog is from Osaba <laughs> Island, but it also can be um, from other barrier islands. Those genes have all gotten mixed together and they do have, actually have some Asian swine genetics in there as well. So they're not purebred Iberian hogs like you would think of when you think yeah. of a big hog that's running through the, the forests of Europe. They're more like a, a mixture of the two that kind of fits the best environment. You know, they're best fit for that horrible, horrible, um, you know, hot, hot uh, desert-like environment on the beach and coastal dunes of Georgia. And not like, because of that, they store fat, and because they store fat, they're really good eating hogs. Mary Lou. Hi, Mary Lou, that's my plan. Aunt Mary Lou. Hi, Aunt Mary Lou. Yeah. She's kidding him. That's awesome to see her. So, their the lifespan is about 10 to 15 years. Is yeah. that right, Mystery? Yeah. Like 10 to 15 years. But usually in the, um, you know, hog industry, they don't last that long. No. So, um, our pig here at Olin gets to live out their long lives. And we just blow bubbles. You blow bubbles. Yeah, so, so does anybody out there know why pigs like to play in mud? Give us a clue. We'll give you a second to think about it. Give me one answer. Why yeah. are they? Um, why do we give them mud pits? Why do they like mud? Yeah, I think, think about it's, it. It um, has to do with two. Like what I was talking about before about their hair. Why they have hair? Yeah. Yeah. Very coarse, wiry hair. Good for making four bristle brushes. Yeah. Say that fast five times. Four bristle brushes. Four bristle brushes. And those brushes actually are so durable that you can find them in use today in some Georgia communities. They're very, very cool natural bristle brush. Yeah. Super, super awesome. Now, um, I don't know if y'all are aware of this, but pigs are actually have a really high intelligence. Yeah. Super, and super um, they are trainable. I don't know how much our keepers work with these to train them, but our former pig, Streaker, she could do about three or four tricks. Yeah. Uh, tricks. Tricks. Yeah. Marsha, yes, yeah. good job. Is that your mom? Mom, mom and Mary Lou teaming uh, up together, both in Kula. And there's another reason. They're farm girls, they grew up on farms. Okay, besides cooling off, it's a good, um, especially here on the coast of Georgia, and Dawn, she's scratching herself right now, goes, get in the mud, Dawn! <laughs>
very smart and they're very social too. So in the wild, they can be in groups up to 30, 30 pigs. So be typically a bunch of females and their piglets. And then one or two males maybe hanging out as well. And piglets are gonna be a lot of piglets. Yeah. yeah. And the piglets, that's why we have to do hunts for them a lot of times in these islands because they will actually do a lot of damage because they reproduce so quickly and they have no natural predator. Mandy loves pigs! Mandy. Has Mandy seen our pigs? Is it Mandy's person that appears? Or? It might be um, Mandy from Iowa. Mandy? Is it Mandy from Iowa that loves pigs? Mandy Moe. Mandy from Montilla. Um, yeah, pigs are super sweet. Super sweet little animals. Yeah, and I think that they're really interesting too in the way that their body is shaped because they have this kind of like really low to the ground um, kind of bulldozer type effect. So they use their nose to dig oh, yeah, in the nose. dirt Away. and they flip like up. A yeah, it's like a plow. It's exactly like a plow. And they will flip the dirt up and you'll actually see them going Maybe and traveling in a line and grabbing up lots of food that they are coming in contact with. Their nose is always working. Not the greatest eyesight in the animal world, but very, very, <laughs> very good sense of smell. And maybe they can even smell underwater. It looks like he's trying to smell underwater. Yeah. You're going to take a little... going to take a little... I really wanted them to lay down in it, but Stop they haven't it. done that yet, and that's kind of making me sad. Oh, well, they might, Miss Ree. Just give them some time. They're just so excited about all the new changes in your exhibit. Yeah, so the new exhibit is um, kind of probably new to a lot of people that have visited Oatland. This was done by our maintenance crew and then an AmeriCorps group that was here, um, Elm One. So they worked on this exhibit and then we also did some to the barnyard uh, around the cow exhibit and things like that too. Oh yeah, a lot of exciting things for y'all to come back and see here at Oatland Island. Miss Michelle, our, our co-workers are tuned in too. Tim and Pam, Pam Casey. Here. Well, hello. They love the pigs Who too. Who would like a marshmallow? Put my hand there you might be able to see their big tusks. Those tusks are used mostly for defense for the males and for defense against large predators. They grew up in areas where we would have things like big cats and wolves and things like that, but then they've been introduced to areas where there's no natural predators and so they don't really have to worry about it. So the big tusks aren't necessarily going to be used for fighting off a predator, more for fighting off other pigs and territorial disputes. Yeah. Yeah, so their nose, Miss Reed's and I have talked a lot about um, Carnivores or animals that oh, have yeah. long snouts yeah. and, and how it improves olfactory, yeah. their sense of smell. And um, you might be aware of this, but actually in France, they're um, one of the main jobs for some pigs are to find Ooh, this is super, super something cool. in the forest. A mm. delicacy that's super they, expensive so to buy. They pull people forage for them too, right? Yeah, does anybody know what it is out there? Yeah. And it's not chocolate. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's a kind of but it's a, like it's like a it's like a not a dessert though. No, There's not a dessert. It's more savory than sweet. We're just stalling, so you have a chance because there was a little delay, and we're giving you a chance to answer us. Um, but yeah, in France, the farmer will go out for us something with this pet pig. Yeah, and they they're really weird. They're like in the ground, and the pig finds them with their nose. Yep. And digs them up and for the farmer. And the farmer, farmer says, stop. <laughs> for me. Because they're. Lucy, you got it. Yeah, Lucy knows truffles. And yeah. truffles are very expensive um, and they're hard to find for a person, but pigs can find them right away because they're a delicacy for pigs as well as for us. I think, I think, Lucy, you need to be an honorary naturalist here and we can um, hire you to volunteer and do some work with us. Yeah, because you've, you, watched, you, you, you've watched every episode. You've watched every episode <laughs> and you already know so much, so we're grateful. Very grateful that and you're your such sweet a, little Bella. Yeah, that you're such a tuned in visitor. Um, so, um, are we going to go see another animal? Yeah, so we can go and visit the coop I was thinking. I talked about the beast and the fowl, and then we'll finish with the goats and the sheep. Oh, so, sure. we might have to speed it up because I've been jabber jabber. Yeah, pigs are awesome. Pigs are Hi, awesome. Charlotte. It's my Charlotte. I miss you. Okay, we're going to come this way. We're going to go look at some fowl. And not like fowling community, like we oh, talked about. F Oh, you well. Like a, something that would happen if Adam's foot. This one's a foul fowl. <laughs> this one makes fowls all the time because if you go in there, they'll come after you. Well, yeah. some people. Yeah. This 
this is a turkey, 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 turkey. Yes. Yeah. And this is not a, a turkey that you would see necessarily in the wild. This is a domestic version of kind of a wild turkey. Is it a bronze turkey? It's called turkey? a bronze turkey. Yeah, and, and bronze they have turkey a... is a specific breed that looks kind of similar to our wild turkeys, yeah, our, that's why our we American him. turkey. He is displaying right now. He's got a lot of hormones going through his body because if you can see his face will change color mm -hmm. and his snood, which is the red, <laughs> ooh, red dangly thing over his over top of his beak. That's called a snood, S-N-O-O-D. Um, it'll change, it's, uh, it'll get hard and rigid or long and loose and, um, when he gets excited. Yeah. So he is showing off, displaying, he's turning purpley blue. Yeah, and Beautiful. that uh, big tail fan makes them look big, displays to females that they can get all the nutrients that they can. They can pass on those good genetics. So really cool display. Birds are kind of always in a, in, a, in an arms race over who can get the best and the biggest and the brightest and the most beautiful oh, yeah. feathers. And you hear him drumming with his feathers. Yep. Making that sound. <laughs> um, that's also a breeding display. And then, breeding display. Yeah. and then there's a beard. I don't know if you see the beard hanging down. It's kind of in the wiring, but turkey's beards are on their chest. Yeah, and that beard is really, really cool. Um, it's really not, it looks like uh, fur or hair, but it's actually feathers. Kind of that works. It's like a, um, a, a feather that doesn't shed, there which is go. super, super, super weird. Like we have molting typically in birds, but the beard doesn't molt and continues to grow throughout the life of the bird. And he loves that sound. Yeah, it's a super, super cool sound and very recognizable in the forest. You can definitely hear from them far away away. Yeah, now you can hear that in other lek behavior mm -hmm. animals too, yeah. right? Grouses do grouse. it. Grouse. <laughs> All of our types of kind of our prairie grouse and our sage grouse will do it. Rough um, grouse. Ptarmigans will do it. Rough grouse will do it. Um, so they're really cool um, that have these open Yeah, so Rosie is our resident goose. She's got lots to say always. Um, so if we're hard to hear, it's Rosie's fault. Um, Rosie is um, a female goose. We do get eggs from her and they're about almost three times the size of a normal chicken egg. And she is going to be really, really protective of that egg. So we have to always give her space when it's laying time for her. Otherwise, she likes to grab us with her beak, and that is no fun at all. Next to Rosie, kind of to the right, we've got some of our hens. Our hens are a type of jungle fowl. We like to represent different breeds of chickens in this area, and so there's lots of different breeds that we come across, but this one specifically was actually very common, and it's actually closest related to the wild chickens that we would find in kind of Asia um, and where they would come from when they came to the New World. And so they're like a jungle fowl is what they call them. Really cool chicken. The Kellogg's rooster. Yeah. Hens is in the general. Jungle yeah. yeah. Hens in general are going to be our, our laying um, females, right? And then we have our rooster. And I don't know why he's not showing his he's, face right he's now. He's in here. He's, in, he's sitting on eggs like a nice rooster. What? <laughs> That's super weird behavior. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's why we love him. <laughs> He's so, so sweet. He our rooster boy is, is very, very nice to all of his hens. You can get mean roosters a lot of times, but he's super nice and super handleable, and we use him for programs. So we like to say um, thank you to Hey Hey as much as possible. Hey Hey. Um, right, in front, right in front of um, you guys, you might be able to see Domino, Domino or Duck. And Domino is a really, really pretty duck. I always think she's the cutest duck. She's not always so sweet, though. She's not always so sweet. She can be a little sassy sometimes. She's a little sassy girl. But she will. Um, not to humans. But she to will. Birds. She will um, kind of beat up on the hens if they're getting out of line. She kind of keeps everything in line. That is so weird that he's doing that. That's a weird behavior from. Yeah, you're on an egg, hey, hey. Oh yes. Um, we always forget. Um, 
Hey Hey is actually from Worm Club. We always like to thank Worm Club um, for giving us Hey Hey. He's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. He's such a good boy. Huh. Hey Hey. What kind of um, what kind of breed is he? Uh, I can't remember what exactly he is. I think he's just like a Rhode Island red or something like that. That's what I guess. That's what he looks like. Yeah. Yeah. That's what he looks like the most. You never really know with chickens. They got weird. They got weird genes. What you would like. I, I know, know what you would like. His name Cody, and he was pretty awesome. Yeah, he's a boy. Did he hear that, Michelle? <laughs> Who? That that donkey that I knew that <laughs> named Cody. No, I didn't know Cody. You didn't know Cody? Mm -mm. You never met him? He no. lives in northern Georgia. I never met Cody. You've never met donkey Cody? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. I got me. That was a good one. <laughs> Sheep have, so yeah. therefore their hair is um, 
called mohair when you process it. Yeah, super yeah. desirable. Ooh la la, have you guys ever touched Soft, mohair? Soft, warm, very, very, very colorful in different sure. ways because we have different colors of sheep. These guys are, are actually brothers, but they're step brothers. Step brothers? Yeah, brothers from different mm -hmm. mothers. Brothers from another mother? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so they're really, really interesting. I don't even, I can't remember how old, how old are they? Um, they're they're four? like three. three or four. Wait, I have that down. Are they going to be four this spring? No. Mm -hmm. Let me look, because I wrote it down. I wrote the birth dates down. Let's I can never remember with them. But they're pretty young. Um, March 8th, 2016. Ooh. They turned four. Yeah, they four. turned four in, in March. So what's really cool is they're um, actually sheared here at Oatland during our spring festival. Um, we do sheep shearing and then also shear the Angora goats. And then the fiber guild of Savannah actually processes their fiber and makes it into a shawl that's then auctioned off for uh, Oakland Island fundraiser. And so it's really, really cool. Um, they're showing you both number ones and number twos right now. It's pretty, pretty crazy. Yeah. Yeah. They're just, you know, they're just getting real active with their, their backside. Give me a little face scratches. So this is um, Rue in front. And as you can see, Rue is very much the one that wants to uh, you? be uh, up in your business. Finn is a little more shy, so they Scratches. do have personality, and they do very much um, uh, maybe get on each other's nerves like, like brothers do. Mm -hmm. And so what they're going to do is they're going to kind of push and shove and headbutt like you see on nature shows, the rams ramming each other. They'll do that too. But that's all in good fun because they're not really competing against anything. They're just forcing around. Or goating around, I guess. Goating around. So goating um, around. I want to ask them a question. Yeah. Okay, so this is called an Angora goat. Angora. Can you guess where they came from in the world? Ooh, that's and their name question. of the city is like Angora. Ooh. Can you think of what it is? And it's not in North America. What? Angora. So they're, they're a farm animal? Yep. Domesticated. Kind of a high here. desert mountain Ooh. area. Goats are kind of high. Mountain goats, kind of like the mountain goats. Um, aw, thanks, aw. Desiree. Desiree, we, we appreciate you so, tuning in. So, um, Ang Angora. 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 It's a kind of misspelling of the city. Angora. Oh, you're getting close. <laughs> That's the temple, right? Uh, yes, it is. Um, it's I'm going to give it to you. Someone's been writing it down. Ankara. Ankara. You know where that is? It's a Turkish. Turkey. Turkish goat. Ankara. And there's also Kashmir goats, which are from Kashmir, um, which is, you know, between India and Pakistan. So oh. this is a Middle Eastern goat. So super cool. I guess then that makes sense why they have this curly fur to keep them nice and warm with all these layers for those really cold nights in those high deserts. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They're These nimble. They're, they're cool. good at climbing. They're so good at climbing. Yeah. It's so very crazy. Yeah. How is Storm doing? Mm. Storm yeah. is okay. Hey, Storm. Did you Storm. already tell me about? Storm? No, I did not. No. Um, we're gonna tell them about Lucy. Hi. Wants to know about Storm. Well, we're gonna go do the Shetland sheep in just a second. We'll tell you all about it. Um, Storm's good. I don't know about Storm though. All right. What else do we want to talk about these guys? Oh, oh, you know what I've heard? This is crazy. Um, more people in the world drink goat milk than any other milk. Yeah, so their milk is super, super nutritious. Give this away. It's low in lactose too, so it's better for people with have the, uh, lactic. Like you. Um, yeah, that reaction, so it's super good in that way. And it makes great cheese. And uh, oh, basically goat cheese is becoming very popular in the U.S. and there's lots of farmers raising dairy goats now, yep. which are different than fiber goats, which are different than and meat goats. goats. So there's kind of three general groups you can group different breeds of goats into, and these guys are definitely our fiber goats. What about what about the goats that go out and fight fires? Those are my favorite. Oh yeah, firefighter goats. Firefighter. Have you guys yeah. heard about firefighter yeah. goats? They're amazing. So my dog, my sister comes up to me. She lives out in the um, Bay Area where you know they have fires. And she was like, we went and saw the firefighting goats. And I was like, what is that? Were they wearing like fire hats and stuff? Yeah. And she laughed at me and she said, well, they're actually bringing them in to graze in the open areas where the vegetation is getting built up and that helps with a fire break yeah. for fires. So and the fire won't burn as burn slow and as hot. 
It'll just pass through and it will not hurt the forest as bad. So really, really amazing uh, jobs that they do for clearing brush and they actually will clear everything, briars, multiflora rose, poison ivy. They'll go through anything and they have very strong mouths for that. Thank you, Mama Marsha. All right, we're going to go here and see our in. last animal. We're going to climb a fence. Climb the fence. You can teach them no, how to do it no. too. You stay there, you bad boy. They don't like to go vertical, so they don't really like to go over top of the fence. They go underneath the other one. Though. They're very nimble. All right. And here we are with our old boy. He's 12 years old. That is about lifespan of sheep. And um, unfortunately, not too long ago, we had to put Cloud down because of his uh, really impending arthritis. Yeah, it's gotten so, so bad. Joint pain to the point where it was hard for them couldn't to, stand to, up to walk or, or stand. Hi, so um, he had been receiving medication for a long time to that, to manage that pain, and it had just gotten to the point where um, the decision was made by our veterinarian um, to, to go through that process. So it's best for the animal when they're in pain to do those sort of things. Yeah, but it lived a pain. long, very, very good life here at Oakland. Um, and probably the most stressful thing they ever had to do was get their um, hair cut once a year. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like us going to the dentist. It's something we tolerate and then feel really good after. So um, I think that they had a really good life. So we'd like to celebrate Cloud a little bit, throw some hearts out there for Cloud as a, uh, yeah. a very good um, wool uh, sheep. And maybe some people, some viewers out there have a shawl with, with Cloud in it. So that's yeah. kind of cool to think about your little living piece of history from Oakland Island. Yeah. Yeah. So very These similar are, in look, right, Michelle? Yeah, they are, are actually people think our goats are sheep all the time. Yeah. But sheep typically are smaller um, in height and might be a little bit wider, and they're going to develop different kind of um, coarseness to their fur because of their region that they grew up in. They kind of have like a doubleish coat almost with more wiry guard hairs. And so you can kind of see that um, maybe some older hair on um, on Storm here in front of us is kind of browning, but the younger hair underneath is very dark, very black. You're okay, You're okay buddy. Yeah, so these are Shetland sheep from the island of Shetland, um, sh and they are really, really not acclimated oh, to Georgia coast. Um, they, I mean, they are, personally, but this species um, better for a colder, wet yeah. climate. Because yeah. if you've ever worn a wool sweater, yeah. my favorite thing about them is that they're waterproof yeah. because of that lanolin. Mm -hmm. I say lanolin uh, five times fast. It makes my tongue lanolin, 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 lanolin. Lanolin you can buy at the store. It comes from um, the sheep. It's in their um, it's glands they give off the yeah. lanolin. Sorry, okay, buddy. Bud. Um, but it makes them waterproof, and so there's nothing better than a wool sweater in the cold winter. Love yeah. my wool sweaters. Yeah, and socks. a lot of people think that fur is just a, a covering and that it's a layer that keeps us warm. It's like th the denser the fur, the better. But a lot of times, what we're, we're forgetting is that it's actually the air that the hair traps. And yeah. so having curly, dense hair that has pockets of air between, your body can warm that air up and it gives you really good insulation. And so that's why when we weave the goat, yeah. Um, sweaters we want to make sure we don't really do a super super tight weave because we want it to stay a little fluffier and trap that air yeah. and keep us warm. And people also get worried about these animals in the hot hot summer but you have to realize too that their body temperature runs at about 102 degrees Fahrenheit mm -hmm. something in that area yeah. so when you're wearing a uh, insulation on 102 he's staying 102 degrees yeah. Yeah. and um, so it, it you know it might be actually uh, a little hotter than the ambient air sometimes. Yep. So you don't yeah. don't always feel like we we always personify um, animals and how they feel based on our how we feel and our yeah. temperatures. But our we must we went temper. almost five degrees less of a temperature than them, so yeah. it's gonna feel real warm when we throw on a wool sweater. Yeah. Real warm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I love my wool socks. It's probably my favorite well, article. Well, you want to know King Henry the Eighth had I read had. Um, <laughs> so they've been around for a very long time. This breed has been utilized by humans. And these two breeds, both uh, goats and sheep, were one of the first animals domesticated. Yeah, yeah, and that's why we have so many different breeds. Um, I think if you are really interested in these types of animals, a really cool site to visit is um, the Heritage Breed Center. And you can look, search on there all the different types of breeds that are starting to disappear as um, 
kind of we lose um, those little kind of farm families that raise a specific type of goat, a specific, specific type of sheep for their area. So um, heritage farms are trying to pop up to reserve those breeds and preserve those breeds and those genetics. So super, super cool to look at all the different types and sizes and shapes Aww. and characteristics that they do, like fainting goats. Totally crazy. Yeah, so we've got food we can feed out um, to end with. Um, I know the goats are definitely hungry. We'll let you guys That's watch nice. them feed a grazing kind of... Um, can you put it in your bowl, dude? And so this is something that they eat that gives them all the nutrients and vitamins they're going to need, but then they also graze on hay and they'll get some um, grasses and stuff from when they walk around their enclosures. And a larger um, goat corral that we put them in in the evenings, they kind of rotate through that. So if you guys got any questions, be sure to post them. We'll be checking back on this video. If you got any questions for us now? Um, kind of our, our last questions, maybe about anything, because we're wrapping up this live series. Again, like I said before, we will be doing videos, and we will be posting them to Facebook. We just won't be doing them as much with Facebook Live, because we're starting to do programming again. And that programming, we don't want to interfere with our 11 o'clock Wednesday and Friday schedule. Yeah. Cheryl from Pennsylvania. Cheryl from Pennsylvania. Watching. I heard that the, in Pennsylvania, um, that all of the goats have like longer legs on one side because of all the hills. So when they're standing, they don't roll down the hill. Do you hear that? No. It's like when, they, when they want to get to the top of the hill, they actually have to walk around the hill in a circle to get there because they can't. <laughs> so. I don't know about it's, mystery sometimes. It's just very hilly there. That's what I thought. I'm waiting for a joke to come. Well, oh. I mean, some people have longer one leg longer than the other. Why couldn't they have one leg longer than on both sides? Well, thank you so much for watching us, especially to all of you that have been um, regulars and um, watched all these programs. We're super grateful for supporting Friends of Oatland, for supporting Oatland Island. We are really excited to open our doors again sometime, and we will hope to see you immediately as soon as we do. Yeah. We have lots of cool things to show you. Yeah, and we're going to be posting more interactive things on Facebook, so go over the, the Oatland Island Wildlife Center Facebook and maybe uh, Foo. Uh, we'll actually cross-platform um, kind of share it, too, so we'll get some interactive activities you can do for your summer education to keep curious and keep interested and keep loving nature. And if you are um, have a birthday party coming up or someone's birthday, you can always shop at the Friends of Oakland gift shop because yeah. it's online now. Check it out. And it's got free shipping, so you just pick what you want, pay for it, and you will get it delivered to you. Rather awesome. you come in and be open, and, but that will happen too eventually. Cool. So thank you so much, friends. We miss you. We hope to see you very soon. Yeah. Stay safe, Mom.